Joining us now is Lyle Palmer, and he is the Executive Scientific Director of the Ontario Health Study and comes to us from the School of Medicine and Pharmacology at the University of Western Australia. So I guess I start by saying welcome to Ontario. Thank you. Welcome <laughs> to Canada. You've only been here, what, six, seven months or so? It feels like about 3,000 years, but it's uh, actually six months, yeah. <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Thank uh, you. I heard the ad on the radio for this Ontario Health Study, hmm. and I'm sure a number of our producers did as well. We thought we better get you in here and find out what this is all about. Cool. So what is the Ontario Health Study? So it's a population-based uh, health study. Uh, it's an attempt to recruit everyone in Ontario uh, who's at least 18 years of age. So the, there's nine and a half million people in that sampling frame. And uh, we're doing this, uh, we can do this because we're doing it online. So no one's ever really tried to engage a whole society at this level and no one's ever tried to do it online before. So it's a very, it's a big vision science project uh, designed to really uh, 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 give us information that we can translate directly into our clinical and our public health systems. I, I imagine you were doing interesting work in Australia. So why does somebody come halfway around the world just to look at what's going on in Ontario? Yeah, um, my family said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's because uh, it's an opportunity to do big vision science. And I think because uh, there's just so many good reasons to do this in Ontario and lots of reasons why why you can do this in Ontario and you just can't do it anywhere else. Like what? Um, we have some of the best linked health data in the world. So the administrative data that's available on the population of Ontario that's collected by the Ministry of Health is, is outstanding. And the, apart from Manitoba, it's the best in the world. Uh, it's just an ex extraordinarily rich resource. And that's, so if we enrol someone in a study, we have lifetime follow-up of all of their morbidities and uh, pretty much everything that happens to them from a health point of view, which is just, a, there's very few other places in the world that have that kind of system. Uh, we also have an enormous intellectual depth here. So uh, the big, on, on lots of uh, parameters, the biggest health project in the world, the biggest biomedical research project in the world is the International Cancer Genomics Consortium. That's like the Human Genome Project for Cancer. There are 12 countries involved, but that's all led from Ontario, from the Ontario mm. Institute for Cancer Research. So there's some exceptional things happening in Ontario. And I think also because it's, you know, it's a population of 13 million people. It's two thirds of the population of Australia in a pretty small area for, mm -hmm. compared to Australia. Uh, and, uh, and there's enormous uh, ethnic diversity here. So Toronto, um, again, on a number of parameters is, is the most ethnically diverse city in the world. Mm -hmm. And so there's, uh, there's lots of reasons to want to do this study in Ontario. Okay. Lots of reasons to think we can do it better than anyone else. What do you want to find out? We want to find out what causes uh, chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer and uh, uh, diabetes. And we want to find out uh, how would we intervene to, to prevent those diseases uh, uh, from developing, or if they do develop, from, from, from taking a, a, a nasty clinical course. So we'd like to find out uh, uh, how, how would we do effective health promotion? How would we intervene to, uh, to give people targeted health information? And how would we know that was working? And what kind of framework would we build to translate those, those, that information into something that was clinically meaningful and that would actually have public health impact? So you've got nine million people who are kind of eligible to be looked at. Yep. How many of million. those nine million, nine and a half million, yeah. do you need for this to be a, you know, good data? If we just got a million people, we'd have the biggest cohort study in the world, and that's where we're going. What we ex what we anticipate, of course, we don't expect all nine and a half million to take place. That would be the, take part. That would be the dream. Um, we we'd we'd anticipate two or three million people to take part. So we'd we'd uh, we're aiming for a twenty or thirty percent sample of the adult Ontarian population. But again, if we just got a million people, we'd, we'd have by far and away the biggest uh, cohort study in the world, and it would be ex an extraordinary thing. How is recruitment going so far? Very well. Uh, we've just, uh, we launched the study on the 29th of September, and the, Deb Matthews, the Minister for Health, uh, launched that. And uh, uh, we took it pretty slowly to start with uh, because we had to make sure that everything was very secure and, uh, you know, essentially we've built a small bank mm -hmm. from a security point of view, but also uh, the idea that 10,000 people could log on at once and it won't go like right, that. Right. And uh, so we, status, we did formal threat risk assessments and satisfied ourselves that was the case. And then we really, uh, in the last month before uh, the holiday break, we, uh, we really launched our, our communication strategy. And we're, we were in the Now magazine this, this week and we're, uh, uh, we're really doing stuff all over the province. And so we're just ramping up. And actually over the holiday break, we had a 36% increase in registrations. So 15,000 huh. people have registered so far. 15,000 have registered so far. Yep. But you want, you'd like a million. Yes. So you've got a long way to go. Yes, but we've only, we've only been doing this for a month. <laughs> and what's the deadline? Uh, this will go forever. This is the kind of project okay. that's designed to go forever and ever, long after I've, I'm not here anymore. Um, and w the, the idea is we, the, the power comes from the size, the, the amount of information on each person, and the fact that we're following them longitudinally. So we're following them through the course of their life. For how many years? Forever. Forever? Forever. 
So, so we are starting now, and yep. this continues in perpetuity. Forever and ever, yep. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the power comes from looking at how does disease develop and what keeps people healthy and, you know, what predicts healthy ageing. So why do you get some people who, you know, uh, are 75 are running to be the President of the United States and other people, you know, are, are in nursing homes? What, what, what is the difference between those two scenarios? I can imagine that, uh, first of all, people I'm sure be happy to know they don't have to go to their doctor to do this study. This is all online, right? Yes. By computer. Yep. However, they may have concerns about privacy. How have you addressed those? Well, actually, when this study was being, and this is uh, one of the reasons for doing this study is to establish best practice. So, uh, you know, our, our aims are, are uh, ambitious and uh, we, we, uh, we want to establish best practice for the world. So how would you do the study in the best possible way? This study was actually designed from a privacy point of view by the Privacy Commissioner of Ontario. Oh. So uh, Anne Kavukian got together with uh, someone from Cancer Care Ontario, Pam Spencer, and they said, well, if we're going to design a study to, to maximally protect everyone's data and be, be the, the best possible practice from a privacy point of view, what would it look like? And that's with, that was the Ontario Health Study design. Hmm. So uh, extraordinary attention has been paid from a security point of view. Uh, we're, we're essentially plugging into a, an informatics infrastructure that was built to allow 12 countries to swap whole, whole genome sequence data. Uh, so um, uh, we take privacy really seriously. We have a privacy officer. We have a whole ethics advisory group that, that, look, that oversees us. And the Ethics Committee of the University of Toronto also oversees us. Okay. So from the moment you log on to the minute you've pushed that final click saying, yep. I'm done, yep. how long would it take to do it? On average, it's about 20 minutes. And the age range of people taking part is 18 to 95. So, you know, God bless their cotton socks. There's three people between 1995 and 95 in the first week who logged on and filled out the questionnaire, hmm. so, which is just terrific. And how many times are you expected to do it over the course of in perpetuity? So we, uh, we will ask if you enrol, we'll ask you a yearly questionnaire about your health, essentially just an update. And we'll also um, we'll ask you other questionnaires, depending, you know, and this will be on subsets. But for example, we'd, we'd want to ask a full residential history and a full occupational history. We'd like to ask you about your suburb and how walkable it is because that has a big impact on, on risk of diabetes and, and obesity. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to ask uh, about cognition, and we'd like to ask about uh, a whole range of things. So uh, physical activity and sedentary behaviour and diet. And those will all be asked uh, perhaps at six-month intervals. That's being worked out at the moment. And that will go on and on forever. And why is the cutoff 18? Oh, just, if you, just because uh, if you deal with children, you have different sets of ethical issues around consent. I see. We, however, there are other... Uh, parallel efforts under, underway at the moment to do other things like construct an Ontario birth cohort. And mm -hmm. this is a, a parallel project where we'll be asking uh, uh, not every pregnant woman in Ontario, but certainly uh, a large chunk of them to take part in, in the Ontario birth cohort. And those children will be followed th throughout early life and childhood. And uh, the parents will be part of the Ontario Health Study. So in parallel, we're building something, I guess, like the Ontario mm -hmm. Family Health Study. Okay. But... If it's done online, you're mm -hmm. already sort of excluding people who do not have computers. Yes. And if it's done online, you're, I, I'm guessing, more than likely, as opposed to less than likely, going to get people responding who are kind of tech savvy or computer savvy. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you start to wonder whether or not this study mm -hmm. starts to favor a particular group at the expense of another group that yes. may not be as represented. How have you dealt yes. with that? It's a really good question. Uh, so that's sort of played heavily on our mind when we were designing the study. And uh, there's very good evidence now, both from medical research and from other areas like industry, that uh, if, you, if you do something online, you actually reach a broader demographic than if you send out bits of paper. And of course, if you, if you send out bits of paper, you, you're inherently limiting your reach because it's very expensive to do that. Sure. And so this is um, the, the cost of, do, of administering for us one questionnaire or nine and a half million now that we've, now that we've built this infrastructure is the same. So we can keep doing this essentially for the same cost. So uh, if we were sending out bits of paper, that would rapidly become enormously expensive. We'd, just, sure. we'd be very limited in the number of people we could look at. And the way we've dealt with this, um, and the, demogra the, the demographics are interesting. The biggest group using Facebook are actually middle-aged people in Ontario. What, what's middle-aged these days? Well, <laughs> probably me. <laughs> um, so, so 30 to 40. 30 to, for 30 yeah. to 40 is middle-aged now? Well, 30 to 45. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, well... In that age demographic, let me say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, of course, why not middle age? No. Um, You're very young still. Yeah. Yes, Lyle. And uh, uh, so, 
82% of all households have some form of internet access uh, in, in, uh, across the province, and that's, that rate is higher in the cities. Uh, we've also started talking to the library boards in Ontario, and of course public libraries have internet access, so mm -hmm. we're putting big posters up in the public libraries and making it clear that people can go to the public libraries to, to fill in their questionnaire. All of this will also be on smartphones in the next three months, so hmm. Blackberries and iPhones, so you can actually do the questionnaire online. And this, the whole thing raises a, re a really uh, interesting set of opportunities that haven't been available in this kind of study before. So because we're online, uh, it's, it's a mechanism for obtaining information from people, but also for giving them information. Sure. So you, we, can, we can target the health promotion uh, really effectively and uh, uh, give people back something. Sure. Is it only in English? No, it's in English and French. English and French, but no yep. other languages beyond that. We, uh, we piloted uh, uh, the study on 8,205 people and we actually translated into uh, Chinese and into um, Punjabi and uh, some, some other languages and actually we had very little uptake on mm. those languages. Uh, we are talking to Heart and Stroke and other groups about piloting some translation as we, uh, really it's reaching into the, the uh, uh, ethnic groups within Ontario and so part of that is, is choosing clinical leaders in those communities to go out and be our champions. So it's just off the top of my head I'm thinking you know how would you get the older immigrant who yes. you know doesn't speak English or French particularly well yes you know yep. to participate in this. Yeah so uh, at the moment the resources we have uh, only allow us to translate into French but uh, but there is some interest from groups like the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Ontario and uh, some of the clinical leaders in the Southeast Asian and Asian community around translation. Okay, are you yeah. concerned that the, that the uptake will not be sort of demographically broad enough to make the results as useful as you'd like them to be? Well, this is another fascinating thing about doing it online. Uh, what what you, tends to happen in, in epidemiological studies is that you send out a bit of paper, someone fills it in, you get it back, eventually it's entered, and you know, a year later you, you work out who you've got. In this case, we, we have the 2006 long-form census data, for every FSA in Ontario, the first three digits of the postcode, so let's say a suburb, we can uh, take a table where we've got the uh, e e ethnicity categories from the census and the uh, age categories, and we can populate that statically with the, the, the census data. Of course, we know the long-form census is going the way I, the dodo bird, so... Have to, very unfortunate, but, yeah. but we still have a pretty good picture for each suburb of, of who lives there. And dynamically, in real time, we can update those tables to say, well, who are we actually recruiting? So if we're in Markham and we think we should be getting a 50% Asian sample and we're getting a 5% sample, we can actually change our, our recruitment strategy. And no other large epidemiological study ever has had that capacity. Hmm. So we can actually change our recruitment strategy as we go. Gotcha. Yeah. Can you give us an example of how some information that you glean from this study hmm. could actually lead to a change in health policy that people would see so yes. that they know this is meaningful? Yes. Go ahead. So uh, there, there are fantastically good uh, health promotion packages around stroke for people who've had a stroke or, or who've had someone in their family have a stroke. Now they sit on a website and uh, unless you as a patient go to that uh, uh, website, and most patients don't, uh, they just sit there. We'll actually be screening uh, people and asking, have you had a stroke? Uh, or has someone in your family had a stroke? And we'll ha we have their permission to recontact them and give them additional information. So we can actually take those, those uh, very good health promotion packages and deliver them straight to people. Hmm. Not only that, but let's say the four types of health promotion package that, that people think are good. We can randomise all, all four of those. So we randomly assign one of the four. At one year, three years, five years, we'd have information about the health outcomes of those groups and we'd have information then about which one was working best and some might work better in men than women and some might work better in different uh, ethnic uh, groups and we can then target those packages directly and that would be a direct uh, uh, link between those results and the public health system gotcha. in Ontario. You're a genetic epidemiologist, right? Yeah. Is there a genetics angle here? Yes. I mean, presumably we don't know our own, I mean, we're, we're not going to put our strand on there, right? We, we just no. don't know. No. So uh, what's the angle? So this, this, uh, this study involves at the moment just online recruitment uh, but a lot of that recruitment is taking place within workplaces. So uh, uh, large employers like hospitals and universities, uh, unions are, are, are emailing their members saying, we've endorsed this study and pretty much everyone's endorsed this study. Um, that I think we're one university away from every university in Ontario and a couple of hospitals away. So it's, 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 it's Do you want to identify the stragglers now to embarrass them to participate? Name and shame. No, no, I don't. <laughs> I did think about that. No. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, they're emailing their staff and students saying, why don't you take part in the Ontario Health Study? And if, if we're in that kind of workplace environment, the, the cost of us setting up uh, a mini clinic, if you like, and, and collecting additional information 
from volunteers, including a blood sample, is very, very small. Mm -hmm. And that's what we'll, we'll be doing. So we hope to collect a few hundred thousand people that way. In addition, uh, we're going to use our own sampling frame and all of the health advocacy groups uh, and all of the research groups are really reorientating their programs to point at the Ontario Health Study. So this is a sort of an overall framework you can do population-based research in. And uh, uh, we're going to use our own sampling frame to take 100,000 people and bring them through an assessment centre in downtown Toronto and they'll be, the, we'll oversample for ethnic diversity. So it'll look something like, uh, and this is still being worked out, but let's say four tranches of uh, uh, black, Southeast Asian, Asian and white. Uh, and we'll bring them into an assessment centre in downtown Toronto and those people will get a very detailed assessment. So a full ophthalmic exam, so full eye workup, uh, audiology, uh, full body imaging, uh, full cardiovascular workup, respiratory, and also they'll be asked to donate blood. So gotcha. there'll be, there'll be a, a strong genetic uh, component. In our last 10 seconds here, could Ontario make money from this study? Yep, one of our aims is to work with industry. We're very transparent about that. We don't, we're also very transparent that we'll never give your data to anyone, to an, to anyone from industry. Uh, and we'll protect that data. But, of course, we have to recognise that the, the people who make new therapies are drug companies, and, and governments don't, and researchers don't. So they might buy the data from you? No, we would do the analysis, and what they'd buy from us would be a report. But oh, we, gotcha. we, we very much want to build new industry and new capacity in Ontario. So this is also about new knowledge-based industry and biotechnology. Gotcha. Lyle Palmer, Executive Scientific Director of the new Ontario Health Study. Good of you to visit us at TVO tonight. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Steve.